welcome to another episode of Teacher's Corner. I'm Teacher Kirby, and this episode we're going to go over a basic or beginning uh, no frills DPS build. So this will start you out. Um, this is not going to, I want to start with this, this is not going to break any records. Okay. Like I said, this is a basic beginning DPS build. It will get you started going down the DPS road. It will, um, as I said, it's basic. So we'll go over why we do some of these things. Um, but it will hopefully help you to understand what it is that you are looking for. Okay, so I've called up, um, this is actually my Vorgon, um, what is it, my Vorgon ship, there it is, my Vorgon carrier. Now you can use this on any ship that will have uh, similar configurations. So it doesn't have to be just this ship. I will go over what it is that you're looking for to help you build a basic DPS type build. Okay. So first things first, what I'm looking for is at least a Lieutenant Commander Tactical with at least a Lieutenant Universal that I'm going to apply as a tactical. Okay. The reason for this is so that I can get a uh, beam fire at will three along with two copies of an attack pattern beta. Okay. And we'll go over why that is later. Okay, so again, at least a Lieutenant Commander Tactical with at least a Lieutenant um, Universal is the bare minimum of what I'm looking for. And as you see, that's what this has. This is my bare minimum. Okay, and of course, then the engineering station is kind of important. And for that, I want a bare minimum of Lieutenant Engineering. And we'll go over why that is again as well. Now this gives me a bonus. This goes all the way up to Commander. That is a bit better. And again, we'll go over why later. And then preferably at least a Lieutenant Science. And again, we'll go over that later. Okay. So now I said my minimum was Lieutenant Commander Engineering with a Lieutenant Universal that I'm going to put, or not Engineering, Tactical, Lieutenant Commander Tactical with a Lieutenant Universal that I'm going to put as a TAC. And again, as I said, this is no frills. I understand that this is a Lieutenant Universal Temporal. I'm not going to use any of the Temporal Ops abilities. Okay. So there we go. So why do I want a Lieutenant Commander Tactical? Very simple. Because I'm going to use the Lieutenant Commander slot for Beam Fire at Will 3. This has the least uh, downsides or, or uh, the least debuffs to my beams. I only lose 10% of my damage and I only have a 30% or 30 accuracy debuff when I go into Fire at Will. Fire at Will is one of the best uh, buffs to your beams in the game even with these debuffs on them so 
I do want fire at will as my buff okay and then I can put in the lieutenant slot the lowest level of attack pattern beta attack pattern beta 1 in my lieutenant spot and tactical team 1 in my uh, ensign slot okay then in the uh, lieutenant universal I'm going to put another tactical officer I'm going to change up his ensign to fire at will 1 and I'm going to tell you why I'm doing that now that we have our tactical and our lieutenant universal slotted I'm going to go I'm going to explain why I want this setup okay so fire at will I want fire at will up or active as much as possible now that means that I need two copies okay that's one of the keys that people forget is doubling up okay it is important to have this skill active as much as possible so that you are hitting multiple targets as often as possible during your match that's going to increase your DPS or your ability to kill things is to be firing at as many things as you can okay as often as you can so in order to have fire at will up as many times as we possibly can we are going to put fire at will 3 and double that up with a fire at will 1 okay now you may be asking oh well why fire at will 1 I have two lieutenant slots here why don't I just put one of the one of the replace one of the attack patterns with a fire at will one or with a fire at will two sorry well you could but then you would not be able to double up on your attack patterns which is important to double up on the attack patterns and the reason for that is you want to be able to pair or to sync up your fire at will with attack pattern beta attack pattern beta it's important to note affects every target you hit so you want that attack pattern beta active while your fire at will is active okay now these debuff your target or soften them up they lower resistances so that when you hit your target you hit it harder your beams do more damage because of attack pattern beta okay so you want that paired with your beam buff well in order to do that if you're using two beam buffs two copies you need to have two copies of your attack pattern beta so that you can sync them up or f of activate them at the same time okay now that is important if you're going to try to maximize the DPS that you're going to get out of something so and that is why I am willing to forego one of the tactical teams the tactical team is an important buff not only does it give you a little bit of uh, damage buff but the biggest reason that we put tactical team on is because it automatically distributes your shield strength to receive to whatever shield is receiving damage for 10 seconds now this is a good thing that means you don't have to worry about you know looking at your shields and making sure that the shield that's taking damage is is the one that's highest attack pattern or sorry tactical team is going to do that for you 
and faster than you could ever do it yourself. Okay? Now, you're going, but teach. You only got one tactical team. Yes, I do. But I can easily go in and do and make what we call a virtual copy by going into my roster and putting on active space uh, an officer that recharges the time. Now this one recharges the time for engineering team and buff. I can find one in my tactical that does the same thing for tactical team and buff. And on this character I'm not sure if I have one but I can look through and I can find that later I think it's a might be a con officer anyway but I can look through and I can find that later they are fairly cheap on the exchange and you want one recharge time reduced for tactical team and buff okay so similar uh, similar to the engineering and I think it's a con officer I might be wrong it's been a while since I've looked but that can getting a couple of those will recharge or will put this down to its global or shared cooldown okay so it's like having two or you just have one okay but that is a pretty easy fix is to use duty officers to cool that down and they're fairly cheap okay so that is my bare minimum tactical okay if I'm going to do as much DPS as I can with a quick and dirty DPS build all right, now I said earlier I want at least a lieutenant engineering. Now I have here a commander, but I want at least a lieutenant, and I want at least a lieutenant for the emergency power to subsystems. Now I want to make sure that I have at the very least, and I'm going to put that there okay now you see I have emergency power to weapons one two and three here on this character so I want to make sure that I can at least slot emergency power to weapons two and emergency power to weapons one I use this here these are bigger now why because these abilities, if you read the tooltip, they give a bonus to my energy weapon damage, plus they give me extra weapons power for 30 seconds. Okay? Now, when you have two of these, the shared cooldown or the global is 30 seconds. So when I activate this one, then I'm able to <clears throat> excuse me then I'm able to click on this one 30 seconds later so I can keep this bonus going and this extra weapon power for the entire match okay there's never any downtime as long as I have two copies of this so that's going to increase my DPS. Having that bonus energy weapon damage and having that extra power is going to increase my DPS. So I want to be able to have two copies of emergency power to weapons so that I can have it going the whole time. So with a commander I can use emergency power to weapons three 
Now this gives me a slightly bigger bonus to energy weapon damage and gives me a bit more uh, weapon power. Okay. Um, for the duration of this particular one and I can cycle that with emergency power to weapons too in this case. Okay. So if I have a lieutenant commander same deal but I need at least a lieutenant to have two copies of emergency power to weapons on my character. Now in this case I'm also putting things like uh, auxiliary destructional integrity and engineering team one. So the rest of the engineering abilities I can put towards survival and one of the things we might remember hearing you can't do DPS if you're dead. So survival fine. I don't have a problem with that so we use the rest of the engineering things for survival. You could put reverse shield polarity here you know basically whatever you want to increase your survival or to debuff your enemy anything that you have available for that but make sure that you have two copies of emergency power to weapons okay now I also said later that I wanted at least a lieutenant science and again this was more for our survivability side now I have here lieutenant commander now the good thing about a lieutenant commander science I can put something that might increase my DPS like maybe charge particle burst or destabilizing resonance beam that is a good one okay or a gravity well something that does damage okay I can put that in the lieutenant commander slot but my lieutenant slot and my ensign slot I want dedicated to two things these two things are gonna help me because they're gonna help keep me alive and they're gonna help clear things this one especially is gonna help clear things that would keep me from being able to shoot and that's an important thing okay so I have here hazard emitters too I like using hazard emitters too because hazard emitters too has a or gives me a larger amount of hit points for my heal and a slightly larger damage resistance rating um, but it also continuously removes hazard debuffs and damage over time effects for 15 seconds okay so this is why we use hazard emitters it's a cleanse it does really well especially when you're fighting things like the Borg because the Borg use plasma so it'll clear the plasma burn among other things so the Borg um, Romulans etc things that use plasma burn and damage over time effects this is amazing to have it'll cleanse that for you okay and the science team why is the science team important a couple reasons number one it uh, regenerates your shields but the other thing is it removes science debuffs so why is that important well you know those annoying little EMP probes that go around and shut off all your systems and make it so you can't shoot and I uh, can't do other things this removes that effect okay so that's why science team is important for being for helping you to do DPS okay 
because it will remove nasty little effects that take away your ability to shoot. Okay, some nucleonic beams, it takes that away. You know, all of those things, this will remove it. So that's why science team is an important thing for helping you to do DPS. Some people don't make that connection. Okay, so now again, in basic, I would want at least the lieutenant, hazard emitters, and science team one. Those are my minimum. Okay, so in review, double up on your tack. You want to double up on your beam buff fire at will. You want to double up on your attack patterns. In this case, attack pattern beta. The other reason we use attack pattern beta, it has a short cooldown that matches or is close to your beam cooldown. Your beam, uh, your beam attack cooldown. Okay? So, the important thing, double up on your beam attacks, double up on your attack patterns, and match these two, match your attack pattern and your beam attacks, match them up. Okay? That's important. Have at least two copies of emergency power to weapons. Okay? And have your science team and something to cleanse your uh, to cleanse your damage over time effects. That'll help to keep you alive. You want to have some survivability because you can't do DPS if you're dead. But your bare minimum, two copies of a beam attack, two copies of an attack pattern, two copies of emergency power to weapons, and then the rest survivability. Okay? Now I would keep this destabilizing resonance beam. The other thing, destabilizing resonance beam, not only does damage, but it does a, but it does do um, a debuff to your targets. So it does do some damage resistance rating to your targets as well as damage itself. Okay? So I'm going to leave that one. So this would be my build. Okay? This is a basic build for beginning uh, DPS. This would be the no frills build. It's another way. So if you find a ship that is similar to this, you should do pretty well. Now you can, of course, expand on this build. If you can get a build that has two lieutenant commander tactical slots, great. Double up on the fire at will three and then you can double up on the tactical team and keep the attack patterns the same but uh, yeah so again you can switch this around a little but the important things double up on your beam attacks double up on your attack patterns make sure you have two copies of emergency power to weapons and make sure you have that science team Okay, those are your important things. All right, this has been Teacher Kirby explaining the basic no frills beginning DPS build. And uh, you can hear the discussion of Teacher's Corner live every Saturday night on the Pilot Review Show. It's a good little show. We do news and review of Star Trek Online. 
and uh, I hope to see you there. You should have, you should see the, uh, the address or the uh, link for it coming up on your right hand, right corner of your screen. And uh, if you like what you see, please consider uh, liking, subscribing, and becoming a patron. And I'll see you next time.